Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Everyone checking in on the Canadian MJ sector. So just rewinding one week and the last weekend video that I put out, I basically said that the Canadian MJ names needed to consolidate to start the week and then see continuation and close at the high of the week at the end of this week in order to prove to us that they're for real and they have followed through. I said anything other than that, we're disappointed. So yes, bulls are disappointed, but we ended the day on Friday with a bit of hope. So this start of this coming week, the Bulls do have the potential to prove themselves. And that's what we're going to be looking for. Just another quick note. I put out a video yesterday about a presentation, 90 minutes long, that I did for friends that are interested getting into the U.S. marijuana stock sector. And it was designed for those that don't really know much about stocks. So if you have any friends to share that link with or you want to watch it yourself, check out the YouTube channel. So CGC did close at the high of the day and we had our low of the pullback down at 26.36 and that level held. So again, it's not all doom and gloom. There is the possibility that if we hold this level and break resistance of 28.41 this coming week, this would be very healthy sideways consolidation, a new little support base established. And then if we can get over that 28.41 level, we're looking up at 29.62 and then some gap to fill which would be all the way up to 3129. So one day at a time, as always, what we need to see is an increase in bull volume. Like we saw on the most bullish days of the initial move up, we need to see that happen again for this continuation move if the bulls are going to prove themselves. S&P 500 remains strong and healthy, so there is a possibility, keeping in mind that Wednesday is the FOMC, and I'll talk about that a bit in my broader market rundown video. Checking in on Cron, so Cron holding up as well. It has a bit more distance to cover to head to that resistance. I'm very surprised we stayed with an inside bar on Friday. This means Monday, definitely a top watch because we have a four day tightening range that is extremely likely to break on Monday. Just realized my mic was all the way up. So extremely likely to break on Monday. And we're looking at 1128 as a bear break level and 1163 as a bull break level. When you have a time frame that is this tight, you need to see increasing volume when the break occurs and you need to see multiple levels taken out. You don't want to see just one or two levels. You want to get that follow through and that's make you, that makes you confident to hold the trade and stay in it. You know, if we break 1163 and we get up to 1167 and then start consolidating, that's not really confidence building. The bulls want to see a move over 1163 and quickly making its way up into the upper $11 range. So watching Cron as well, APHA, Still holding on, so I am looking at the potential of re-entering an APHA position as I have been playing around a little bit the last week, but nothing really significant, just a break-even stop out, and it would re require an hourly trend change. So I need to see an hourly higher low and higher high, but that happening may be a time for an entry for me, and I would put a stop under 654, the low of consolidation, and again, the goal would be a weekly trend change, and to see that, we would have to get over 760. So I'm going to be a little bit picky, but that is something that is on my radar this coming week. ACB, not surprising at all to see a daily inside bar form when you usually have a significant reaction to earnings and you establish a range. You usually trade within that range for a bit. So there was a bear play first thing this morning or Friday morning where we started. And, and the important part here is where we started and where resistance was that could increase the odds that a bear break or I should say a rejection is likely going to happen either at six psychological or 604. And I remember live streaming, someone asked me about it and I said, we're likely to see a, a rejection and bears have a top fishing setup where they would enter and then exit if 604 did break. But what the, the point I'm trying to make is the fact that we opened on Friday where we did, which was down at 592. So the fact that we opened at 592 and just to get a break of 604 from 592, we are talking 14 cents, so over 2%. If we had opened at 598 and then saw a bull move to test that resistance, the distance required to be covered 
is much less. And you have to figure if it, let's say there's 700,000 shares traded in the first five minute candle, let's say four, 300, 400,000 shares are what was required to get through 1% of upside. So if you start 1% higher, all those shares then can go towards potentially breaking that 604 resistance. And I'm hoping that's making sense. But what I just mean is where the open was and the distance that was required to break resistance had a significant impact on the likelihood of whether a break or a rejection was most likely to happen. TLRY, daily time frame, high or low established down at 2907. That's now the most important support. And if the bulls can get over 3366, we have the trend change. Bulls again want to see a spike in volume if we get a bull break. After 3366 is 34, 35 psychological levels, and the daily trend change is on watch to start next week. So TGOT has been all bare since we got that news that ACB was divesting. We're looking down at 251 as the only nearby support level, and then after that, we're looking down to the lowest price that we've seen, the all-time low. So 251 and 219 are the only levels here. We are in a weekly downtrend. We're in a daily downtrend. We are in an hourly downtrend. So just be aware that all trends are facing down. And if we were going to see any kind of bounce take place, we would have to see a significant shift in momentum. Uh, we'd have to see an hourly trend change. If we see an hourly trend change, we're just looking for a daily lower high to form compared to 307. But we would have to see a daily trend change for the bulls to be confident that we're not going to break all time lows. At this point, they're still 15 plus percent away. So we have some space before that all-time low, but just the lack of clear supports and the clear trajectory of these trends would make us cautious of potentially heading down to those levels sometime in the next month. VFF is also a little bit of a lagger, just in the sense that it's not looking as bullish as others. That being said, VFF can very easily turn momentum just like that and then follow the sector. And I wouldn't be surprised that that would happen if we see CGC lead the way and get that daily trend change and others start to follow. I do believe VFF would be able to very quickly pivot and make its way back up towards recent resistance of 1253. But as of right now, the most important support is down at 1135. Bulls really want to hold that level because if that breaks, we have our high, low of the pullback, inability to break resistance, and then a break of support if we lose 1135. So that is a key short-term level. And just as percentages go, you know, how far a percentage move is required to see a daily higher high, we'd have to go 7%. And if you compare that to CGC... We only have to go three, we have, we have to go half that distance percentage wise. So as you can see, a theme in today's video is noting percentage moves required to do certain things and how that impacts probabilities. VFF, we're done talking about it. OGI. So OGI breaking the low of that initial consolidation, we can distinguish it from VFF right off the bat. We had our high, low of the pullback, inability to get any follow through, and then a lower low. So what VFF bulls want to fend off and not see happen has already happened on OGI. And again, these are little details on how we compare individual names. So if I'm comparing these two, technically speaking, from this week's of trading, this week of trading, OGI is weaker and VFF is stronger. It's a very clear distinction based on what this chart has done. So anything on the daily for OGI for under 490 is just a lower high and support is down at 443 and 411. So again, just roughly distance required for a bull break over 15%. So the pullback is more notable. We're watching for a weekly bear flag possible. There's a lot of weekly bear flags still possible out there in the major Canadian MJ names as well. And getting that daily higher, lot, higher high this coming week will decrease the odds that weekly bear flags are possible. So OGI has to see a significant shift and get back over 518. Hexo, also on the weaker side of things. But again, we're watching this long drawn out pattern, which is an inverse head and shoulders possibility. The bulls have to turn around momentum and head back up and break 475 resistance to change this trend and see a very significant momentum shift. But that's a ways away from happening at this point. We're trying to build a base down at 415, a little double bottom the last two days, and bulls need to break 428 on Monday for us to say, all right, our daily higher low is established and then shift our focus back to resistance. But not only are we watching this bigger, broader range, I wouldn't be surprised for this to end up being its own little tightening range into next week or through next week. VGW Green Day trying to form that daily higher low. Have we changed the hourly trend? The answer is no. We hit our low of 341 and it's all been one bounce from here. I need to see a clear hourly higher low and higher high if I'm going to be confident calling something a daily higher low. 
and it hasn't happened just yet. So key short-term support, 341 and 343, a little bit of a double bottom, and bulls must hold that level and change the hourly trend for us to be looking back up at resistance of 390. LABS, also similar to some of the names we just looked at, pretty sizable pullback, but we are going to expect a tightening range here. 426 was the low. We have our high up at 549, and now we're looking for a higher low compared to 426. And then we need the hourly trend change, and I would be looking for a lower high. So the hourly trend change, trying to follow through, have to break the high of today or Friday. 482, have to break that resistance to confirm the hourly trend change, which would be our daily high or low. And then we would watch for the potential of a lower high this coming week. NRTH and KHRN, I'm going to still cover them just because I have more time on weekend videos and it's separating them is easier for me, but I don't trade these names. I have no interest in them. Their dollar dollar volume is not enough for me, but there are enough members interested in them. That's why I keep covering them. So NRTH, we had our low of 72, high of 85, higher low of 74. Bulls must break 85 to change this daily trend. If we do that, we zoom out to the weekly time frame, and anything under 98 is just a weekly lower high. So keeping an eye on a longer term perspective, but step number one for the bulls, change that daily trend by getting over 85 cents convincingly, which would be pretty much be the highest price in just about a month. KHRN also needs a daily trend change. It's actually fairly correlated with the major Canadian MJ names. A lot of these pullbacks look the same in some of these names, trying to change that hourly trend, very, very low volume. That, that amount of volume, we're talking $250,000 traded. So again, it's just not nearly enough for me to be interested in. And when you have that low volume and a penny stock, this is what your charts look like. And your hourly time frame, the clarity for trend changes is just not there because so many candlesticks have the same range because there's not enough dollar volume to break to larger ranges. So KHRN hourly charts, not really clear, but we need to see a bull move up and break 176 for a clear daily trend change. And anything under that will be bust. If we reject and then drop down to a lower low, we're looking back down at 133, the recent bottom. But if the sector can break its recent highs, some names are going to do it a lot sooner than other names. Like CGC is going to do it, in my opinion, a lot sooner than some of the names we looked at in the second half of this video. But that's a must. And if we do not see that in the first few days this coming week, red flag. So thanks for tuning in. Check out that intro to USMJ video if you're interested. Share it with your friends. And let's see, I'm about to go to a sweat lodge tonight, a Lakota family sweat lodge. So that'll be fun. And other than that, we'll end it here with some ducks. I got some video from when we first encountered the ducks and video from the last time they visited, which may be the last time I see them. I'm pretty much preparing that every time I see them is going to be the last time for this season. And they'll be back in the spring, or at least someone will. So, do good things, have a good weekend. It's a party. It's a bird party.